Let's say you have two cells from the human, same person, one of the chromosomes, one arm that flipped. Let's say you sequenced both cells. How would you know, would you see it? Because the sequence is the same. If you have mutations where it's letter changes, that gets detected by sequencing. But structural rearrangements are difficult to detect by sequencing because the sequence doesn't change. Structural rearrangements are hard to detect. In many cases, straight up impossible to detect by regular sequencing. And so people still do this microscopy stuff, right? But you're looking at DNA with your eyes. Like, what are you going to see? You can only see gigantic things, right? But suddenly I have a way to sequence your genome in such a way that I will know how far away every part of that genome will be from each other. So if something got flipped, I will see it immediately. And so what we did was we basically leveraged this technology to create a way of doing what karyotyping does these days, but in a much higher throughput, much higher resolution way. For a hundred years, we've been using these very manual, very laborious tools to detect these super important cancer markers, gene fusions, et cetera. Suddenly there's a next generation way of doing it with sequencing. And it's not because we have a new sequencing machine. It's because we're capturing a new kind of information. We're catching these touchings and the touching tells us what's far and what's close. And we use that to reconstruct your genome. That's one of the things that I really love about it is that it's not a brute force approach. It's a cleverness-based approach. It's a new kind of information that lets us do new things.